Good morning, everyone. Um, over the last two years, Scottish Agritourism and Go Rural have had fantastic support from Visit Scotland, something which is much appreciated, um, and we also continue to work closely together. So I'm delighted to introduce and to welcome our next speaker, Vicky Miller, Director of Marketing at Visit Scotland. Um, good morning, and I'm delighted to be with you again. I think this is actually the fourth time um, I've spoken at the Agritourism Conference, and it has been a real pleasure um, to work with Caroline and the team and, and all of you to kind of really harness the, the potential um, that the sector has and to see it go from strength to strength. And so I'm going to share with you um, just some of the work that we've been doing um, with you um, and with Caroline and the team um, later on in my uh, presentation this morning. Um, but what I want to do first is just talk about some of the trends and insights um, that we can see now. Um, what it means for us collectively as a destination, how we grow Scotland's share of global travel, and importantly also what it means for you in terms of the opportunities to kind of grow your business. So whether that is about extending the season um, to increase occupancy across the year, whether that is about um, promoting more um, experienced product, um, there are many opportunities, and I'm going to just touch on, on, on that later. Um, so, it is absolutely no doubt we've come out of COVID, the world has opened up and we are all travelling again, but it definitely is a little different. Different in the sense that um, things like climate, the climate emergency are more front of mind, that we are seeing a more discerning um, traveller who's travelling with purpose, very conscious of the impact of their travel um, and looking at how they can mitigate that and make better decisions about how they travel. But also things like health and well-being being right up there from a consumer point of view. People are actually putting that first, which actually presents a huge opportunity for us as a sector and you and your businesses to kind of look at how we kind of capitalise on that. So let's just dive into um, some of the trends. And if I start first just by looking at demand, um, it is a very competitive landscape. But what we can see is that travel spend is coming back much faster than the number of travellers. And that's particularly evident with international um, visitors. So you can see there for the first half of this year that trips are still down on where they were pre-pandemic in 2019, but expenditure is up. Um, and there's evidence in some of the data and insights that, you know, that are shared with us of a slightly longer stay and a higher spend. And also visitors from international countries coming out with the season. I was in Edinburgh yesterday and interestingly, there was still a lot of both American and European visitors at this time of year, which actually is not that typical of where we were pre-pandemic. When we look at the domestic market, we saw the importance of the staycation um, trend in 21. And as things obviously, as travels opened up this year, we have seen obviously more, uh, more of people within the UK taking overseas holidays, but there is still a propensity to forgo an overseas holiday for a holiday at home. It's just easier to plan. Um, and so not everybody is back to saying, actually, I, you know, I want to go overseas. So that staycation trend is still there and we can still see that in the sentiment and propensity data that we get shared, that, that, that we see on a monthly basis in terms of a trend for next year. So that holiday at home being really important. We're also seeing the kind of wealth effect. So COVID actually resulted in, in many people being able to save money, not being able to do the things that, they, that they, they could do. And that has actually resulted in that pent up demand for kind of higher value and unique experience type trips. And more on that in a little bit, uh, in a minute. But also some of the research that we're now seeing on the impact of cost, cost of living has, has an impact on, on what people will do, I guess, in, in the coming months. But there are two dimensions to this. From an international perspective, it is clear that people will travel. And when they're traveling with purpose, they will spend money and they are, but they are looking for value for money. And that value is actually in the experiences. They want experiences. Money can't buy experiences is what they're looking for. 
For a UK traveller, the sentiment is slightly different in that if people are going to holiday at home, they are looking for value, as in they are looking for aspects of the trip to cost them less. So they still want to holiday, but where can I save money? And that will be in things like accommodation deals, but it will be more likely to be in things that they do like eating out. That also plays into what you have to offer because they are looking for those ways where they can still enjoy local produce, where they can they can still be, you know, they can bring people together, friends and family when they're on holiday. That connection is really important. But actually with the facilities that you provide and things like barbecues and, and just fantastic catering facilities within your properties, that makes all the difference. Access to local food, that makes all the difference to how they can actually still enjoy nice things, but in a different way. So what about kind of visitor behaviour? Um, we are seeing sort of those trends around sustainability, well-being, inclusivity, and people looking for more personal experiences coming through in every sector, I think, of the economy, but particularly strong in travel. And actually, the recent research that we did highlighted that people will, while they might need to save money in other aspects of their life, they are going to prioritise their mental and physical well-being. And that does mean that's a huge opportunity for us as a destination to think about what we offer, that connection with nature, that space, um, the, you know, the ability to enjoy new experiences, to do something different from your every day. And particularly, I think, for you as a sector, it's a real strength or so something really to think about how you can start to position your business from that perspective. We're also seeing a new generation of travellers and they are willing to travel further and spend more money and not a traditional audience for Scotland, but they are showing an appetite for what we offer. And so we've got to start thinking about how we attract that younger traveller because they are travelling now and they are willing to spend money. And the mood is very much one of you only live once, that's YOLO, and going to plan the greatest of all trips goat. So people are, new terminology is coming into our vocabulary. It's about that bucket list travel. People will, um, are planning those, those kind of really um, impactful trips. It's kind of revenge travel in many ways. Um, but also we're seeing new types of trips. So for example, 40% of people who come on a business trip will extend that for leisure. Um, and also people, because many you know, um, employers are now offering kind of flexible working, people are looking at how they can combine working from a different destination with actually in going out and enjoying and experiencing that new, new destination. So flexation, strange word, but there you go. Um, so these are all uh, trends that we can absolutely tap into, um, and particularly when it comes to storytelling, and I'll talk more about that in a, in, in a minute. But whilst, the, while couples predominant, uh, are predominant in terms of the kind of visitor party size that we attract in Scotland, we are seeing differences with um, solo travel, particularly an older generation, and actually people who want to come together, whether that's friends and family, um, you know, friends, friend groups or family groups. And again, that absolutely plays into, particularly from the domestic market, plays into that opportunity for you as a, as a sector. So how are people planning and booking? Has that changed? The answer is yes. Um, we are seeing, and I guess through COVID, we have seen the increasing importance of social media. More people than ever before have, have been, are using social media um, and it's become, TikTok for example, has become the fastest growing social media platform for travel inspiration and not just for in inspiration but actually for ideas of the type of holiday that you can enjoy in a destination. Um, and you would think, okay, that's, that's really aimed just at the young audience. Not true. <laughs> TikTok actually, the average user is, is, is in the 30s. So the, the average age, I should say, is, is in the 30s. So it's not just young that are using social media. 
And we've seen a trend for much later bookings, a lot of last minute booking. And I think that's likely to continue, but we are seeing particularly international visitors, that booking window extending. So people starting to plan a little bit further out, which I think is good news because I think, you know, that all that last minute booking, um, I, I appreciate for you as a business, leaves you kind of seat of the pants sometimes not knowing what's coming. Um, the increasing importance of intermediaries, um, particularly for people that are booking um, longer haul and indeed short haul international trips, because if you're going to plan the greatest of all trips, then you kind of are looking for a bit of advice as to how to do that and how to have the best experience. And with international, we also see quite a high percentage that will book package travel, so one in three. Um, and they're turning to travel agents, tour operators to help plan their trip so that they get the most out of it, um, particularly from getting the delivering the experience that they are looking for. And typically those are much higher value um, uh, trips. And you can see there also the importance of that kind of more mindful traveller, so sustainability, inclusivity options starting to kind of filter into that decision making process. So that also is an important consideration. And how about reaching audiences? What's changed? And I think really there's just three things I would summarise with this slide. Social media, um, continues to be one of the biggest influencers as well as word of mouth but that also plays into that whole thing around advocacy we need people to share their experiences of Scotland far and wide experiences of your business far and wide and therefore you need to kind of harness that user generated feedback um, through social media Creative must work harder and actually video is still absolutely the number one way that people are engaging. It's the kind of content that people will engage with and it doesn't need to be very high polished production quality content. This is actually more snackable, digestible content. It's the kind of things that you see in your Instagram feed. It's that real, the, the kind of reels content. And it has to be really authentic. So it does not have to be. It's be something that you can probably do every day from your business and share it with, whether it's your existing visitors um, who will share it hopefully uh, far and wide. So video content is st still engaging um, and is still the most memorable types of content. But also important that we also think about storytelling and impactful narratives. Um, and that's particularly important when you start to look at your own website content. So all of these things are going to be the things that will kind of get you in front of the visitor. What does it mean collectively? In summary, it means that we need to think about putting responsible tourism absolutely at the heart of everything that we do. The product that we take to market, the, pro the new product that we develop and actually how we position not just Scotland, but your business because actually we cannot unload the responsibility for uh, for climate and, and other things linked to responsible tourism um, on the visitor we need to make it easy for the visitor to enjoy a holiday in scotland knowing that they are treading lightly they are doing the right thing and they're having a fantastic experience so what does that mean four things we need to do think about how we create more sustainable immersive and inclusive um, experiences. We need to turn that into bookable product that people can easily buy and that is discoverable in the channels that consumers are using. We need to think about how we tell authentic stories to kind of really cut through the noise in that very competitive landscape. And we need to look at how we harness um, social media and social proof in particular. In other words, get other people just telling how fantastic Scotland and your business is. And how do we do that then? So how do we kind of do that storytelling and how do we create those bookable experiences? So if we think about what are the motivators, what drives somebody to go on holiday? It's about escape. It's about rest and relaxation. It's about satisfaction, that sense of achievement of doing something new. It's about appreciation. It's about appreciating a new culture, local food and drink experiences, almost living like a local. It's also about connection, connection with self, 
connection with ancestry, connection with local history, your Gaelic heritage, for example. It's maybe about giving back um, and connecting with friends and family. And if you think about what you offer as a sector, I think you've probably got one of the most exciting opportunities to kind of really harness all of that, to think about using those those drivers to create stories about what your business can offer, but also to create new bookable product. And I've just put some examples there on the side panel in terms of what that might look like. So it's using the natural resources that you have available to actually deliver what the visitor is looking for. So how do we do it at Visit Scotland? We use a very simple tool, which is a, a kind of storytelling calendar. Um, and it, it really is just harnessing what we can see that consumers are searching for across the year. So it really does tap into those kind of seasonal trends that you see in, in what people are looking for in a holiday or a break across the year. And it just allows us to use that monthly thematic to think about it. What are the different product angles? What are the different ways that we can create content? Who might we partner with? What influencers might we use in any given month to tell that story? And that's probably a very simple tool that you can also apply in your business. And here's our agritourism. I'm calling this our agritourism planning wheel. So it looks at the customer journey right the way through from inspiration to finding out more about the type of holiday I could I could enjoy on a farm, on a working farm, right through to um, I'm planning to book that holiday and right through to I'm here experiencing. And what we've done is just look at, well, what are the key themes that we can pull out to tell that agritourism story? So everything from stunning landscapes, connection to nature, well-being, authentic experiences, farm stays, responsible tourism. So these are just some of the angles that we've used in the content that we've created at Visit Scotland and then using different channels to tell that story. So at the inspiration phase, that's where social media and using influencers is particularly important at driving that kind of real um, uh, engaging content on, on social media channels. Um, but also website content is really important when people are starting to think about planning that content. So really just to kind of give you some of the examples here, you can see some of the article content and the blog content that we've created on visitscotland.com. And that's particularly important because of the, you know, the 20 million unique users coming to that site across the year. It's we're making sure that we're creating content that people we know are, are searching for, but then also distributing that content through things like our email programme, which you can see there on the right hand side of the screen. Using things like social media, now we've got Tuesday has become Tuesday at Visit Scotland and our followers do expect to see an animal on a Tuesday, whether that's a cow, although we do occasionally put in a sheep and others, but fluffy animals, you think, well, is that really important? Interestingly, yes, because it gives us an opportunity to share your content, so the content that you're creating in your business to tag you, to tag your destination. And actually, if you look at some of the numbers and some of those posts, you can see that the engagement rate is very high. It's some of our most shareable content. And that does inspire. It does get people to think because, you know, you're giving them dreamy content in their social media feed that they go, where is that? What can I be doing there? So it does really do that inspiration piece. But it's not all about animals. You know, we have looked at how we promote agritourism um, with Carolyn and the team across the year, looking at the different seasonal product that you offer and kind of really showing that um, through the, the kind of all the different channels that we that we have available. And we are also sending influencers your, into your business because that's a really great way to kind of show the type of holiday, but also to show actually how it makes the visitor feel and that's really important, going back to that whole um, storytelling and getting across those emotional drivers, how you're delivering on those emotional drivers. And then, of course, we promote that content, not just through Visit Scotland channels, but far and wide through um, paid promotion activity. 
and using some of our innovative global partners. This is here the example here of working with, with GoPro, which we did um, when we were locked down to kind of be able to share your beautiful you know, farms and landscapes, but also we've worked with them very recently as they launched a new product. So that was a great partnership um, to kind of reach a global audience. Um, so what about growing your business? What's going to be important? It is going to be important that you think about getting that mix of visitors across the year. You want to think about how you can tap into those high value international audiences. Now, what you see on the chart here is the visitor mix, the kind of three year average that was pre pandemic. And you can see that the UK, the US, France and Germany were absolutely our most important, four most important markets, both in terms of volume, but importantly, in terms of value. From a UK perspective, 14 million overnight trips delivered 55% of the value. Internationally, three and a half million trips delivered 45% of the value. The average value of a US visitor is four times more than a UK visitor. But we do need that mix to give us that sustainable growth because the UK market is important for that seasonal spread. Are there some, uh, some of our key European markets? But international will give you that higher spend. And actually going back to that earlier insight, they are willing now to travel out with the main season because they also know that that is what we need for that kind of sustainable growth and that kind of reduction, I guess, on being a more responsible, that, 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 that um, appetite to be a more responsible visitor. So for you, the opportunity with the domestic market is to attract those longer stays, but also to think about the higher value short breaks. And if you think about some of the earlier insight, there is a percentage of the UK population, I think it was nearly 40%, that are saying they are not being hit by the cost of living crisis. So they still have money to spend. You need to get to them. And international visitors, there is that opportunity for how you can create more added value experiences that they will pay for because they are looking for that unique holiday. And that is a way of adding value to your business. So really thinking about that market mix is going to be important. Also thinking about the channels to market, being discoverable is absolutely going to be key. And this data here that you see is pulled from a Visit Britain survey that was that took place earlier this year as people started to travel and we started to, we needed to learn more about how were people going to travel, how were they going to plan and book. And what it highlights is the average across consumers in over 30 markets as to the channels they're using, not just for booking, but actually for that early inspiration. And you can see the importance there of peer review sites, of price comparison sites, of OTA sites. So distributing in those channels, whether that's your accommodation and or the experience product that you offer is going to be key. And I know that means paying commission. You need to see that as an investment in your marketing because you need to, if you want to get to the people that are traveling now and willing to spend money on travel experiences, you need to be present in those channels. But it means you have got choices. And so this chart is really trying to explain what those choices are. If you get a high level of repeat visitors, you may not need to think about actually, you just think about your own online presence and your own website. And that would be number one on this diagram. If you are looking to extend the season, if you are, have got capacity, a simple step would be to think about how you distribute through an OTA. If you want to target and attract some of that higher value international experience spend, then you need to be thinking about working with the travel trade. And I know all that probably sounds okay, but there's a lot in that and there's a lot to think about. But I guess the key thing that I would want to say to you is Visit Scotland is absolutely here to help you make those decisions and to give you that advice. We've got some of the team present with us today, but there's also lots of advice online on visitscotland.org. So what are the things you can do? You can think about creating more bookable product that is a demand for it, being discoverable, and that will drive more sustainable growth. Through your own channels, it's about telling your story in new ways. Talk about your history, your heritage, 
Um, talk about the journey that you're on to, to, to reduce your own carbon footprint. And it doesn't even matter if you're at the start of the journey. That's an important part of just telling people what you're doing. That's going to be important. What you do, the role that you have within the local community, supporting local through local food and drink and all of those things. Create your own storytelling calendar. Use the visitors that are coming and sharing their story. Use their content through your, so your social channels. Create your own little micro moments of digital content, and it doesn't need to be polished at all to inspire repeat visits to people for people to come at a different time of the year and make sure you're optimizing your website for the right keywords and we can help there if you're then thinking about web booking engines make sure is your online is your own booking tool is it integrated with a channel manager because that's the easiest way for you to be distributing through expedia booking.com or anybody else and just a few other interesting insights here Expedia is the number one OTA if you want to get to that American market. Tour operators are more important in markets like Germany. Travel advisors are more important also in markets like Australia, but also we've seen a real growth in home working travel advisors in the US. And when we're talking about people that are using tour operators and travel, travel advisors, that's not just groups, that's individuals, but also small groups. And you've got options there about how you price um, your product to suit either. Verbo is the number one app that has been downloaded. I think it's, it's, it's had more downloads than any other app in the first half of 2022 in the States. And interestingly, they're seeing a real growth in people on that app searching for unique types of accommodation, which does include things like farms, farm, farm holidays. Interesting, but I think we're almost out of time. Last slide. So, yeah. yeah. And then finally, working with the travel trade gives you that opportunity to kind of really drive that, that revenue. And finally, Visit Scotland is absolutely here to help. If you do want to make those, those steps, then we can, um, we will take your product to market through our teams, through our channels, and we can support you um, in, in many different ways. And as I say, please talk to any of the team today if you want more advice. Thank you. I'm sorry for going on. Um, so I've just I've just been informed that we um, have an extra two minutes, which is brilliant. So we've got a little bit of time for a couple of questions. Um, so if you have a question for Vicky, if you could please raise your hand. And when you have the microphone, if you could please state your name and your business and then ask your question to Vicky. Hi, I'm Jenny File from Adney Pumpkins near Aberdeen. Um, I was really interested in the reaction you got to your Tuesday Tuesday um, photos. It's phenomenal. Um, and just a quick one really to say, do you like people to send in photos to you or how do you decide what you're going to feature on that uh, particular page? So yeah, so if you are creating any content on your farm, just tag us. So if you at Visit Scotland or, or use any of our hashtags, so uh, Scotland is calling is our kind of main campaign hashtag, we can actually see in the, in the social media tool that we use, we can see and surface that content. Um, and so that allows us to, um, to share. Beautiful landscapes, it can also be video content. It doesn't actually need to be um, just images, but video content, you'll see actually um, some of the, the, the examples I had up there was actually just really short video clips. So just tag us is, is, the, is the best way to kind of for us to surface that content. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Vicky. Um, anyone else? Any other questions? Can you raise your hand? We've got time, I think, for one more. Oh, just in the middle there. We've got a microphone. Oh, sorry, someone up there. So we'll come down there afterwards. Hi there, uh, thank you. Um, is there anything we can learn from other countries about uh, promoting our agritourism sector? Have you seen anything particularly innovative or exciting that's happening elsewhere? Or is it all happening here? <laughs> Are we doing it better than anyone else? 
I actually think Caroline is the better person to, to ask that, that question. And I think we know that there are maybe other countries who where agritourism is more established as a sector. But I actually think what you've achieved as a sector in a very short period of time means that you are we are now really punching um, above our weight. But I, I think it is more the experiential products of so thinking about you know how we create those bookable experiences, how we capitalise on um, you know the local food and drinks. That's a hugely important part of the holiday. And I think if you're looking at other destinations, that's maybe where they are slightly ahead of us. So they are selling, promoting those bookable experiences through some of the channels um, that I mentioned. But I have absolutely no doubt that in time we will you will all be doing more of that. Okay, brilliant, thank you. And um, Kay, did you have a quick question in the middle? No, okay, okay. So um, thank you very much again, Vicky. Uh, that was really interesting to hear. Thank um, you. And thank you everyone for your questions as well. Thank you.